All right, all right. What's going on, party people? This your man Griff. Yeah. Since we talking business, I figured I'd throw on my gear. Y'all saw it in a thumbnail. Be I had my jacket and my my brim on. Um, it's called the Godfather. You fellas know about it. Y'all know about the Godfather hats. So right up in there, Godfather. You gonna you gonna kick it? You gotta. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'm old school. I love my, I love my brims. I love my brims. Got my feather and everything in there. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, I even have a hat box that I keep it in. I've had this hat for over <clears throat> well over 10 years. So, and this still looks brand new. I pull it out every now and then, make sure it's, you know, it's all dusted off, make sure there ain't nothing wrong with it. And um, every now and then when I kick step out somewhere, me and the wife, you know, I throw my, my, my godfather on and be kicking it out there. <clears throat> and so, but um. Yeah, I want to talk some business stuff today. We talked a little bit about it yesterday with the men. Um, didn't go into all of the different areas. Plus, I was already in the process of doing this video, doing some research and um, putting some stuff together here. Um, now, something I wanted to show y'all um, before we get started. Uh, yeah, before we get started. Um, I'm getting notifications already. All right. So <laughs> getting as soon as I start getting notifications. So I wanted to show y'all something. Um, and I'm gonna put the link in the description below to where it's at. Um, as you know, I'm a web developer by trade. And one of the things um always was struggling with was finding the right color. Okay, the right color that a customer would want for their website. And the best way to get the right colors is what we call hexadecimal. Um, there's other different methods you can get for color schemes and stuff, but hexadecimal is by far one of the best ways. Um, and if you know what color you want, you know the hexadecimal number, then you can use that um, to get the color. So like the color scheme you see right here, um, I use a hexadecimal color and most like StreamYard and all, they have all the different little hexadecimal, but sometimes you're, just, you're trying to find the right color. So um, this here is called, the site is called December.com. And like I said, I'm gonna put the specific web address in the description. And when you go there, you can click on whichever of these color areas that you want. So if you're looking for something in the teal area bluish area um you know and you wanted to use that so let's just say i wanted to use this diamond blue so here on the stream yard it should, hopefully it does it while i'm live um i can go in here and change the color scheme of it by boom and you see right there so I picked that specific color and boom, that's what I got. Um, then I have this other one called a sky blue five and I drop that in there, hit enter, changes it, you know. So you can go with almost any color scheme that you want. Um, <clears throat> So I'm going with this here. I don't even know how to say that word. So I'm not even going to try. <laughs> Boom. So you can, all you got to do is see the color that you like. You ain't even got to know what the color name is. Just see the color that you like and be like, all right, that's it right there. That's the color that I want, you know? So, you know, I went over here to the warms. I, I don't even know what the, color that i had before it doesn't save it so i have no idea what that color was i really don't um but i'm gonna go with this scarlet maybe that's what it was it might have been scarlet and you got fire brick i always like the fire brick but i'm gonna go with the scarlet here um i guess that's the same color that i had up originally i have no idea but <clears throat> i just wanted y'all to see um this site here 
one of the best sites that I found out there to help me when I was active. Well, I'm still doing websites, but when I was working and I needed colors and stuff, um, you got different color grays and blacks. All depends on what you're trying to do. So I just wanted to show y'all that at the beginning, because if I don't, I might forget. Or some of you, as a lot of people do, y'all only look at the first five minutes of my video and then go start texting me and calling me to ask me the questions about the topic that I talked about. So I figured I'd throw this up here so y'all can see this. And then we get on into what I want to talk about. So the um, title um i don't forget the title that i put up i think called um yeah the basics of business basics and mindset um and i've talked a little bit about this before but i had really <clears throat> been working on this for a while um really doing some research making sure i understand some things and i'm just going to read over some things and put the you know screen share and then give my elaboration of it um and my thoughts behind it and again i know people may disagree with what i'm saying may feel like nah i ain't down with that or they may have a different perspective altogether um and that's fine there's nothing wrong with that so feel free down there in the um chat section um you know to say what you gotta say you know what i'm saying um ah, there we go so one of the things this is and again this is just my view on <clears throat> what we're doing here as notaries um i know a lot of people talk about you know teaching people how to run a notary business my question is <clears throat> when i get to talking to y'all my question is and what people are being taught for is how to run a notary business. Are they really being taught the basics of business? Because there's certain things you can do. You know, you're like, okay, well, if you're running a, a, a car cleaning business, a car detailing business, uh, just show up at somebody's job and just start saying, hey, I want to, you know, um, I'm out here and I'm going to detail your car, you know, and that could work. You know, if you have like this gentleman who have mobile barbershops, <clears throat> so they drive around in their mobile barbershop truck and they um, just pull up in a parking lot where they probably know there's most a lot of men work at. You know, maybe they say at the shipyard, you know, pull up at the shipyard on Friday and everything. Um, but it doesn't mean you, you're doing the other aspects of you know, for the basics of business to sustain a long lasting business operation. You're doing one part of just showing up and you're making money, but that's it. You see what I'm saying? You know, you're not necessarily marketing. You don't necessarily have your finances together. You're not really doing your production and distribution of information about who you are, where you are to the point where instead of you driving everywhere, people start requesting you to come. You see what I'm saying? So are you being taught or do you know the basics of business um, for the longevity? And this could translate into any business that you want to do. Um, <clears throat> so one of my favorite authors I talk to y'all about all the time and I would, I feel like getting up. I thought I had his books here is, um, man, I thought I had brought it over here. Oh, I didn't. But um, no excuses by Brian Tracy. Um, uh, so um, when you try to ask. Man, oh man, you just try to do something simple. <laughs> All right. So with Brian Tracy, this here is his book cover. And many of you, you know, I've given this book out to people. Um, it's an excellent book, 21 Ways to Achieve Lasting Happiness and Success, The Power of Self-Discipline, No Excuses by Brian Tracy. 
Um, the man is on point. He knows what he's talking about, um, so forth and so on. So by the book. Um, so I'm going to just do some reading here and then we're going to discuss it. Um, and it's called the basics of business success. He put this out in 2005. Um, and it basically says, as he starts off, he said, business as an art <clears throat> is an art as well as a science. It's a matter of practical experience, judgment, foresight, and luck. To be successful in business, you must master the basics of business. Fortunately, all business skills are learnable. You can learn anything you need to learn to achieve the goal you can set for yourself. There are no limits ex except the limits you place on your imagination. And I'm going to, and the links, of course, you know, is going to be in the description. Um, there are three major reasons why business fails lack of money lack of knowledge lack of support and all three of those are very very key um to me when you're married or in a relationship of some sort that lack of support is huge because in some cases you can have all the money you can have all of the knowledge but to be with somebody who doesn't support you, who doesn't even try to encourage you or try to learn, to try to understand what you're doing, the goal that you have, that is that can that can just demotivate you completely. So these people, you know, you don't want to leave your family in the dust. You do want to move forward, but you also got to let them, you know, you do want them to know or to support you or to believe in you. So it's a fine line sometimes, you know, because I had to do even with my family. I was like, OK, hey, this is what Pop's getting ready to do. I'm getting ready to start on this pro, you know, this notary um, business. And here's how things are going to be working. But I also let them know I'm here for you no matter what. I got you, even though I might not be here in the evenings like I normally am. I'm not out of reach. You can call me if I need to stay home and not do a notary assignment. I will to take care of anything for the family. So I told them I got your support. So therefore, I need your support. And they gave me the support that I needed, which enabled me to do what I'm doing. Um, hold on. Let me see what this is going on here. Oh, oh, OK. All right. So. Um, so here's a here's several different things, um, seven items that he talks about that you need for your success. First is marketing ability to determine and to sell and sell the right product to the right customer at the right time. Now, and I'm going to try to put this in terms for notaries. Marketing. Everybody talks about marketing. Everybody, a lot of people talk about marketing, how you market to, to get direct clients, how you market to, you know, the escrow and officer and all of that. But one of the things that says your ability it's not in marketing. It's about your ability to determine and sell the right product to the right customer at the right time. And it goes on down later on about under about the marketing about trends in the market here um you know um industry and the market trends here's the thing this is my perspective on it let me if if you're paying attention to the market so marketing is you are advertising yourself to a particular market so what is that market that you're advertising to that market is in this case the um, real estate market for people who are buying and selling homes and refinancing homes. In other words, they uh, uh, you're marketing yourself, advertising yourself to a market that deals with mortgages, which who needs a notary. That's plain and simple. So this market needs has mortgages and those mortgages need a notary. Now what is going on in the market if refinances are hot cool if it's buyers or sellers cool if it's reverse mortgages 
If it's HELOCs, the point is what's going on. So you go to a particular place and if, and to me, and I don't know if anybody's been taught this, I'm just throwing it out. So if you have been taught this, don't try to like Griffey on what you're talking about. I've been taught that. Okay. Then are you doing it? Whatever you, I'm getting ready to say, if you've been taught that, the question is, are you doing it? So I will go into a title of escrow office saying, you know, of course, introducing yourself, but then find out what they actually products they're actually doing. What mortgages are you actually primarily focused on? Do you ever have a need for someone to do reverse mortgages? Do you do a lot of sellers or buyers? You see what I'm saying? Um, do you do commercial real estate? Are you connected with someone who may need a notary to come out there and assist them in that? So if they are doing reverse mortgages and for some reason you're like, I am not doing that. OK, then maybe you need to back out right then and there and move on about your business. I don't see why you wouldn't do it because it pays just the same as others. And yes, some of the signing companies pay a low fee. I get that. But if you're marketing yourself in this case directly, then you need to find out what is the right product to that right to that customer at the right time to the right customer at the right time. What is the product that they need out of you? They need a notary. We know that but they need a notary who's willing to do a reverse mortgage. We need a notary who's willing to do buyer or sellers. We have a need for a notary to, to go over to this here part. So if you're not mobile, don't market yourself as mobile. If you are mobile, then you market yourself because if at the time, you know, okay, do you have any, like if I'm, I'm mobile. So I would say, do you have any, um, you know, closings that you come across from time to time or throughout your calendar year that you may need a notary to travel out because the customer is not able to make it into the office. So you start making them think about, well, well, yeah, we do have, I mean, maybe seven times a year. Well, keep me in mind for those seven. So now keep in mind now, in, like in my area, a lot of the marketing, I mean, the, um, title offices and stuff tell me we don't need you because what we got six or seven or eight notaries in house so we don't really need you we don't really use mobile notaries we've been having problems with mobile notaries and we're a little iffy on mobile notaries got it however if you come across a situation and you said you have six or seven times that you may do or need a notary to go out to take some care of something for you and none of the people here are in a position to do that at that time Give me an opportunity to go out there and do do a closing for you. That's one way. So when is the right time? The right time is those seven times of the year. Those seven times of the year is the right time for you and them to get together and go out there and make something happen. Because right now they don't want to use you because they got people. But three months from now, when they got two closings, that's you know, out in the boonies somewhere or the person can't come to them. Now they like, OK, well, we know we got Griffin notary services that can come out here and take care of us. So marketing your ability to determine your ability, not just somebody telling you how to market yourself and you just following a script, but you have to determine. And sell the right product to the right customer at the right time. Finance, your ability to acquire the money you need and account for the money you receive. That's one of the areas that a lot of people I know are struggling right now. And y'all hear me talk a lot. I'm constantly making sure that I have my accounting together. I will be up to two o'clock in the morning sometimes making sure my stuff is correct. I got my um, income and expenses straight. I spend time doing that. So. You need to be able to do that. Your ability to acquire the money you need. So if you know you need additional money for your oops, for your business, what are you doing to bring in money? One of the ways that I'm bringing in money to help out the notary business is through the house inspections. That helps bring in money because we know there's a delay in the dollars coming in once we do a closing. Um, I just got um, payment from one company. <laughs> for work that I did in July. I just got it 
you know, this past weekend, today's the 22nd. And I got it on the 23rd from stuff that I did last month, you know, came about a week past normal and everything. So they sent a check out once a month. I got my check, 10 signings that I did with them. And I went and put it in the bank. So your ability to acquire funds when you need it. So if I really needed the funds that I got from them and I got to wait a month or wait till the next month. So everything I'm doing in this month for them will come to next. You need other ways to have money in there so you can continue to push your business forward. And then you have to account for that money. Um, production. Your ability to produce products and services at a high enough level of quality and consistency over time. Well, that goes into your ability to be able to produce, to go out there and do the work. When it comes to the notary, it's like, okay, well, what am I producing? The product is you. You're the product, your ability to notarize, your ability to understand your notary laws, to understand what to do with a split signing, to understand what to do with a non-borrowing spouse, how to handle um, a signing with three people, how to go about doing a multiple closing signing where you got three or more clo um, um, properties at one time. So your ability to do that, um, production, being able to produce your service at a high enough level of quality. So how do you how do you go about being in part of our production and a part of our product and service is dropping documents off on time to the FedEx. So how do you go about doing that? Come up with a way to make that happen. OK. Distribution. And again, this is my perspective on all of this, how I look at it for me. Now, what you do with it is up to you, but I just need to, I, I wanted to put this out there for y'all. Distribution, your ability to get the product or service to the market in a timely and economic fashion. Dr. Tech, Jeremiah, out there in California, talks about this a lot. Not directly from the term distribution, but from the term your ability to get to the market. How do you get to the market? What is the market for us? The real estate agents, the title company, escrow companies, the signing companies, the lenders, when they call, are you in? Are you able? Are you able to pick that phone up quickly? When they send you a text, are you responding back? That's the question. As I always talk about, do you know your schedule? Because if what point does it make for you to respond, and you don't know whether or not you can even do the signing if you don't know what your schedule is? So how do you get to the market quickly when they contact you? If you got to sit here and spend time calling your wife, calling your husband, calling man, man and TT, calling the babysitter, calling big mama, then you're like, OK, yeah, I can do it. OK, it's gone. You got to do all of that stuff in order so that you can get out there. You are the product and service to get out there quickly in a timely and economic fashion, meaning it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg just to be able to go out here and do it. So how do you distribute yourself and your ability to go out there and do these signings? What manner do you have? Do you have a backup plan? Oh, your car broke down. Can you call your girl? Can you call your boy? And like, yo, man, I need a ride real quick. Can you can you call Uber? Can you call Lyft? Do you have somebody that works with them that can hook you up? Do you have a friend that works with Uber and Lyft and say, look, man, I know you off the day on Uber and look. Look, I need you to, to ride me. Either you ride me for free or you make some money via Uber and Lyft. One one or another. Come over here and park in front of my house so <coughs> and turn your thing on so I can go on to book you. Something. So how do you get yourself distributed out there so that you can hit that market? When that order comes in, you can be like, boom, I'm on it. <coughs> Sorry about that. Research and development. Are you researching the industry, not just tips and tricks to get over? OK, one part of my research is keeping tabs on when the FedEx last shipping change. I'm researching. That. I'm like, OK, I'm noticing certain times of the year they expand it out and then other times they narrow it down. 
okay. Because at one point, they were shutting um, the shipping off at four o'clock. Now it's back to, hey, yeah, you can drop it off by five o'clock. You see what I'm saying? Researching and development, your ability to continue to continually innovate and produce new products, services, processes, and responses to your competition. One way I can respond to the competition out here is knowing where the FedExes are, what FedExes will take um, take the packages. Being able to be hooked up with the people in FedEx that if I'm two minutes late, okay, we got you. It'll still get there tomorrow. And not just like, you. oh, well. But the truck guy's right there. It's past five o'clock. Come on, now hook me up. No. See, you got to develop a relationship with them, okay? You you got to develop a relationship. How do you know what processes do you have that can help you move quicker and faster? You know, that's why I've been constantly looking at how I do my doc prep, you know, um, changing the way I do that. So I have the video out there that I showed the doc prep, but I've actually even changed from that, which is sped up, greatly sped up my process of being able to get in and get a signing done, you know, in 30 minutes or so. Um you know, what services you, you can provide. At one point in time, I was providing, um, and this is before COVID hit, I was going and doing um, deed recording. Companies was like, hey, can you do the deed recording? Yeah, I can. I hadn't even heard that that was a thing. But when they called and asked me, I said, yes, I can. I mean, when you're constantly thinking about how you can make what you do better, and then an opportunity comes, you'll be able to recognize it. Part of the problem that people have is that they don't always recognize an opportunity to grow and to expand who they are and what they do and their business because they're just looking at the paycheck. They're just looking at getting paid. They're here and now. Pay me for what I did. Pay me for every hour that I've done something. That's it. But you don't see that, okay, like this one company they started giving me orders because they knew I would record the deed. Can't remember the company's name, so don't ask. <laughs> but I did a couple of deed recordings for them. And then, like I said, the pandemic hit and then all that stopped. But if they know that you can do certain things for them. And they ask, you know, they ask you something. Like, OK, cool. So you got to always be thinking. So that was one of the services that I added in there was doing deed recording and then i started marketing that and i think i still have it in my profile that i do deed recordings i think i still have it in there but those kind of things that you can do so you're constantly continually innovating and producing new products or services so like one of the things that i'm doing now and i got this from one of the um from one of the men who came to the um event me and he was talking the day before and he was telling me how he ordered a epson scanner um let me pull that up for y'all so i'm gonna show y'all what i'm talking about so i'm always on, on the look see i don't i don't have all the answers i don't know everything but i'm always learning everything that i can okay so what i did was um me and him was talking and he was telling me how he purchased a portable scanner and this was something that I was looking at doing anyway I just hadn't done it um, I just got busy and really just sort of forgot so he was talking to me about how he um, purchased a I don't remember the thing all right here he purchased a portable scanner yeah okay cool he purchased a scanner um <clears throat> so that he can scan back small packages. Know what I'm saying? Small packages. So I was like, oh man, that's cool. You know, I got the thing. And he said, yeah. So I have a little laptop and I hooked that up into it and I scan. And now I'm familiar with this scanner, but I completely forgot because I got so busy with, with doing orders and I don't take my main scanner route because it's so hot and I don't want it to um to melt. And I wasn't going to use this little scanner because you know to just scan back 150 pages because that would just take a long time 
But when he said, yeah, the scan back small packages, I immediately thought about the buyers and the seller packages that I have, which are very small. And I was like, yeah, the four page one that I had. Let me go to four documents, which four documents, six pages all together. I'm like, man, that would have been perfect for me to have been able to have this and scan. I never even thought about that. So here's the scanner that I purchased, $109 got that scanner and it's a good scanner you know it says scan 16 pages per minute because i think it's manual feed you boom 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 and i was like okay 16 pages a minute that's good but again i just it just slipped my mind until he talked about it so then um so then i said okay i need to get me a computer so i don't want y'all seeing all the stuff i order <laughs> <laughs> where is this other thing so um so i'm very picky with the computers um and i'll tell you why when it comes to computers the, the two things that i look for is hard drive space and ram because if you don't have enough hard drive space and you don't have the right amount of RAM, which in my opinion, you need 16 gigs or more. And there's other computer guy. I'm, even though I do websites, I'm not a computer, you know, actual computer person where I break down computers and stuff. But having about 16 gigs of RAM is good. You know, you got two different hard drives. You got the SSD and then you got the solid state drive. But for what I'm doing, and I think the SSD is better, I'm just trying to just have a spot for these these documents that i'm gonna be scanning so i'm like if i can scan this bad boy and with this scanner you can also scan to a little small sd card so you can scan to a sd card and not even have it hooked up to a printer because it has a battery on it so you charge the battery up you go out there and scan but i'm gonna have my little laptop with me and you know so i can just upload things now you say well what's the big deal about all of this here's the big deal I'm constantly right now we're all we're all doing a lot more scans and researching and developing and trying to come up with a new service and a new way to um promote myself and do and to do better distribution of my service in a timely manner meaning giving scan backs I was like when I get this scanner and the printer set up I mean, in the um, laptop, here's how I'm going to try to market it to the um, the signing companies who contact me. And they say, well, we need scan backs. And all of them say, we need scan backs right away. Well, if I'm trying to do four to six signings a day, I honestly don't have time to go back and forth, even inside, sometimes in the car, you know, to, to really do a full scan back. So I'm going to ask them and say, hey, can I? And I've talked about this before. Look, I have a portable scanner. I can scan you back the critical documents and then before I ship, I can scan you back everything else later. But I need to know from you what critical documents are you looking for? <clears throat> Is it that you just want to see all the um, notarized documents? Because if that's the case, when I do my doc prep, I can pull all of those up to the front. <clears throat> now, some of y'all say, well, that's what I do anyway. I don't necessarily do that because I just go with, OK, here it is in the flow because it all got to get signed okay but if you need it back okay then i can make sure i pull those up to the front um and again i know many of you like well you don't do that no i don't i don't and there's a lot of people who don't pull documents all the way up to the front a lot of people don't start off with the note and the deed and the alter statement there i mean because every single one got to get signed anyway and i've never had a customer say well i need you to start with the with the note and the deed first i need you to start with the cd okay i've never been told to do that um i've been told by notary trainers to do that but i've never been told by a title company or whatever that says you must start this way never been told that okay yes i know it's suggested but i've never been personally told to do it that way um and i have done it that way when you know the when i'm like okay well let me do it this way and just try it out and i have um so 
I'm like, if they need these documents and they can work with me, I'm like, look, I got a whole bunch of signings that I'm doing. Can I just send y'all a quick scan back of the critical documents? If they say, yeah, okay, we'll work with that. And then you get us <coughs> the rest later. That'll be excellent. So one of the other things that I'm trying out and I purchased this just, just as a backup, let's say the laptop goes down or whatever the case may be, or I forget the laptop. Um, this year item is something that I've been, I had said, you know, I'm gonna try. And this year, I just bought this. It'll be here tomorrow. This here basically is a SD reader and it'll slide right into your phone. So it'll go into your laptop. You can um, try it on your phone and boom. So I'm going to see because it said the Galaxy S20 um, is compatible with the S20. So if this will slide into the phone and then I can read it from the phone, I can go from the phone and then upload it. You see what I'm saying? Now, you say, well, if you bought that, then why did you get a computer? Well, I wasn't thinking about this first. I was thinking about the computer. But then afterwards, I thought about it. I said, huh, I wonder if I can get an SD card reader that slide into the cell phone and work with that. And if that's the case, if it will, yeah, because down here, it says it's compatible with the Samsung Galaxy S10, 9, all of that kind of stuff. Um, up here, it talks about, the, you know, the 20. So I'm like, that can work and that can make things a little bit easier for me. So I scan this stuff on that with that thing, save it to the flash drive. And I got plenty of SD cards all floating around here. So I didn't even need to buy a new SD card. Um, I got plenty of 32 gigabyte ones and 64 gigabyte ones and all of that. So in your research and development, what new products and services and how you're going to innovate and compete with the competition. Now, you're saying, well, man, you're telling everybody in your area that not everybody's going to do this. Some people are not tech savvy. Some people um, get highly stressed out when it comes to technology and it's just too much for them. And then if some people can't, if they're high strong person and then you're talking about adding something like this in, they're not going to do it. They And they don't because, see, first of all, you have to see the value in it if you don't personally see the value in it um if you don't see the value in it you're not going to even think about trying to add that to your life if it seems too complicated for the, a person they're just gonna be like i ain't got time for all that yeah it might be work it might be worth it might be good but uh, i ain't got time for all that i don't feel like messing with all that that can happen i've done that before okay so then the next one is regulation. Your ability to deal with the requirements of government legislation at all levels. So you got to be able to deal with whatever it is that comes out that a notary is supposed to do. The first regulation is we as notaries are supposed to be following the rules and regulations of notarial state law, of state notarial law. So that's the first thing. Whether you can use an ID or not, whether you can do this or not, you have to follow those guidelines and regulations. If you're willing to do that, then cool. If you're not, and then I will have to put in here, deal with the regulations or the rules and guidelines that these signing companies, lenders, and title and escrow companies come out with as to how they want you to perform your job and what they want, meaning scan backs, <clears throat> so forth and so on. Um, and note what this is saying. If you notice something here, the theme is your ability. Every single one of these says your ability. Stop depending on other people and looking for other people to do it for you. It's your ability. Do you have the ability? Your ability to find people you need um, when it talks about labor, your ability to find people you need deal with unions establish personal policy personnel policies training and organizational development so if it's just you how are you going to develop yourself how are you going to make things work for you okay now goes into talks about um 
And again, you're going to have have this list. The list comes, you know, about having a product or service that's well suited to meet the needs and requirements of your current mark market. Thoroughly developing advertising promotional sales programs, having good internal efficiency, time management, clear job descriptions, all of that. Making concern for customers for the customers top priority at all times putting determination persistence and patience at the top of the list on part of the business on the part of the business owner <clears throat> here we go and now that you know the seven essentials of business success and the identifiable factors involving involved in helping your company succeed let me share the top reasons for business of for business failure thousands of companies were studied to determine the reasons the reasons businesses fail and they are um, in order of them of their importance so lack of direction business owners often fail to establish clear goals and create a plan to achieve those goals especially before starting out they fail to develop and complete business plans before launching their company now I didn't do a business plan per se or a handwritten when I had a mental one but I did set some goals I set a go a financial goal how much I wanted to make how much I was willing to do <clears throat> how much I was willing to go out there and work um how much time I was willing to set you know basically just the same thing work but sacrificing the educational part and learning um all of that so I had made some goals there were some loose goals, but there were some goals. Impatience. Uh, hold on one second. Oh, there it is. Hold on, hold on. Impatience. I had forgot to put that in there. <clears throat> this occurs when a business owner tries to accomplish too much too soon or expect to get results far faster than truly possible. A good rule to remember is that everything costs twice as much and takes three times as long as expected. So you're going out here in this notary business, and hold on, let me go back to the, uh, the, the lack of, where am I? Do, 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 do. Also with the lack of direction, you're not knowing whether you want to do closings, general notary work. You're just sort of all over. OK, no idea. I'm just a notary. I just hopped in here and have no idea which way you really want to go. Not even understanding all the different areas of that you can get into with a notary. So therefore, you have no direction of what you're doing. You're just doing what they told you to do on YouTube or in Facebook. And you're just sort of floundering out there so and that's not good at all um where was i at so yeah impatience you're being too impatient um you're trying to accomplish too much you're hopping out here trying to take on three and four signings at a time some people are doing that um you're trying to be everywhere and it's just you um and you know one of the things you're being impatient especially at the signing you're trying to um do every signing like everybody else or like other people are doing i won't say everybody else but other people are doing and been bragging about yeah i'm getting my signings done in 35 minutes or 20 minutes and all of that and you're really not in a position to do that so you're impatient and you're trying to rush this thing along rather than take your time and make sure you develop the proper skills in doing the notarial acts correctly. But you're just hopping out here thinking that you're just going to be popping. You see all of these infomercials of how much money everybody's making. And now you're trying to make the same thing and you're trying because you want to you want somebody to interview you. You're trying to do this thing so you can get an interview so somebody can sit there and interview you. And if that's your goal to be interviewed, that goes back to lack of direction if the purpose of you trying to bust button do all of this is so you can get have somebody interview you and give you some shine 
lack of direction, which then goes into you being impatient because you don't know which way you which way you're trying to go. The next one sound like thunder. The next one is greed. <clears throat> When entrepreneurs try to charge too much and take a lot of money in a short period of time, failure isn't far behind. This that let it sink in moment. All right, it just hit. All right, <clears throat> it just finally hit some of y'all. When entrepreneurs, not W-2 people, let me, let me, let me. Okay. When entrepreneurs try to charge too much to make a lot of money in a short period of time, failure isn't far behind. People, this is what I've been trying to get y'all to understand. I'm not against people making money. I know a lot of people think Griff don't want anybody to make money. Griff want everybody to just get $60 every single time. No. What I know is this. If the business who are paying you only have a certain amount of money that they can pay if they only if their budget is here but your eyeballs are here on how much money you want to make and you're trying to get this out of out of this it ain't gonna work sometimes okay you might get one or two but consistently you're not so you're trying to make too much money or make um trying to charge a whole lot of money in a short amount of time to get this thing. So you're coming in here and you're like, well, I'm gonna just do this notary thing for like eight months or so and pull me in about, you know, 10 G's, 20 G's, maybe 50 G's, you know, a month. I'm serious. I mean, people, not in that so bad, 50 G's a month is high, but people are like, well, I'm gonna try to get eight or nine grand a, a month, maybe 10 grand a month, because that's what the infomercial said. And then you're out here trying to overcharge people and you come into the market trying to overcharge people and they're like, whoa, whoa, where is this coming from? Whoa, whoa, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? You want, because I, I talk to people all the time. People only been doing this for three months, eight months, barely a year. Don't even have a hundred signers under their belt. And they're constantly saying they need three, four hundred, five hundred dollars. That they feel that because, you know, they can do the documents flawlessly, that they should be getting paid $400. And I'm taking the, the median of the dollar amount, the high dollar amounts to say between three to $600, I'm going to say 400 And I'm like, okay, but if you can pull in 400 and you've been doing this here for a, a few months, I've been doing it for four years, so I guess I should be getting a, a, a whole G, right? G is for grand, whole grand, right? You want three C notes, four C notes. Okay, then give me 10 C notes. Because if it's based off of that, you know, because you're saying that you've been doing it for a few months and you should be getting 400, then I should be getting a grand. It's to me that that's maybe I'm wrong in that. Okay. But a lot of people are trying to demand it because let's be real. Some of y'all do not want to be in this here business long term. You really, really don't. You don't want to be in this business long term. You just want to get in here, get you some cheddar and bounce on out. That's it. And I'm not. A, I get it. OK, that's your prerogative. That's what you want to do. Cool. But that's can mess things up for the rest of us, because now people are like, ah. OK, what is going on? That can mess things up for the new notaries who may not have your energy. So greed. Is the number one way, you know, um, as I always share with people. Probably not on YouTube as much, but people I've run across. When people, you know. You saying, well, here's my price. You don't. And somebody said, well, OK, well, 300. I mean, OK, why are you charging 300? Well, I got bills to pay. You never respond back to somebody asking you why you're charging a certain fee. Well, I got bills to pay. My baby's got to eat. Man, I got look, I got I got the light bills to pay. 
my wife ain't going to be going up with me. She ain't, look, we can't even get an extension anymore. So I got, I got, man, I, look, I need the 300. Okay. You, nobody cares about your bills. If you want to charge 300, if you want to charge 400, that's fine. You better give them a darn good reason because that person now got to take it back to their manager. Keep this in mind. When you're talking price to some of these folk, they are not the decision makers. They're just an employee. You are a business owner. So now you as a business owner is telling an employee who's been given specific instructions and given a range of money that they can charge. You see, I'm doing a range thing here. They've given, been given a range. And then if you come outside of the range, their range and your range, you see what I'm saying? Now they got to go back to the manager. So in your negotiation, you better give that employee who has to go to the manager darn good reason because that manager is the one that got to sign off on it. The owner, that manager who may report to the owner is the person who, okay, well, <laughs> the owner gave the manager specific, we ain't paying no more than this. If, the, if it's an emergency, if it's this, that, and the other, call me, let me know. Because now it's like, okay, well, who is this Griffin guy? Who is this Griffin Notary Services? What 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 was this? What is that track record? Well, they haven't, he hasn't really, he hasn't done any signings with us. I mean, this will be his first one. So you mean on his first one, he's asking for $400? Yeah. And what, and what kind of, what kind of loan package is this? It's a seller's. How many pages? It's like 35 pages. How far from him? About 10 minutes. Based on the GPS, it looks like it's about a 10 minute drive. Again, the owner. And that person wants $400. We don't know whether they can do the job right or not. 10 minutes, 35 pages. And how many notarizations in there? Four. So four notarizations. So you're talking about $100 per notarization. Because, see, I know some notaries like to charge per page because they're talking about the printing, you know, 15, I think, was it 10 to 15 or $20 per page? Sometimes they set their price at. Sometimes I think I've heard as low as $5 per page. But you're only, you're only notarizing four pages, so you want $100 per, six, per, per notarization. Go find somebody else. I mean, put yourself in a business owner's shoes. And again, I know some people are going to try to tear me up in the comment section or directly like, but see, you're not looking at your worth. I, I see my worth. They don't see it. <laughs> it ain't about what I don't see. It's I can see. But I got to get them to see. OK, I got to get them to see. Just like when you go into your job, you want $45,000 a year. They're paying 32. You go in and you take that job and you go in there and prove to them and you show them that you're worth more. How many times have you all been around people? Yeah, so-and-so. Yeah, they done went and took my job. She just came in and, and within seven months, she done hopped in a position that I was trying for. And I've been trying to get in that position for two years. And she just came in and boom. She showed them that she could do it. Whether she can or not, that's a different story. But she, yeah, that's thunder. She made them think that she could do it. You didn't make them think nothing. You didn't do anything to give them confidence that you could do it. Yeah, maybe there was some nepotism. Maybe there was some favoritism. Maybe because she looked better than you. Who knows? But she did. So I'm saying all of that to say simply be careful of being too greedy. OK, you do what you want to do. You're going to do what you want to do. That's the thing. You're going to do what you want to do. Because you think that it's right. Just make sure that it actually is right. That's it. As a business owner, you got to make sure the stuff is right. That's why I say it's your ability to do your ability to do your ability to do.
So it goes on to says, taking action without thinking it through first. And to me, that ties into the greed thing. You said, I'm going to charge a high fee without really thinking it through with the customer that you're dealing with. You're like, how much you charge? How much you on your, your, your fee? $350. Okay, well, okay, I told you that it's only, you know, 10 pages. And it looks like, you know, you're barely 20 minutes away from them. So you're saying to get this done, it's going, and it's only one notarization. So you want $300, $350 for just one notarization. So when they told you what the layout was, you didn't think it through. You, yeah, three hundred dollars or boom. Um, sometimes you're not, you know, taking action without thinking it through first. Could be hopping on certain, paying money for stuff that you probably shouldn't be paying your money into. You're paying money into stuff. You're buying stuff, and you didn't think it through, and now you can't get a refund. And you're in it when you don't bought something, you don't did something and you didn't think it through first. Poor cost control. Entrepreneur spends too much. Again, taking action without thinking it through. <coughs> spend too much, especially early in the stages and spend it all and spend all their startup capital before achieving profit profitability so you go you start the notary business and the first thing you do and again if you don't have them you don't and this is you don't have other money coming in to to to, to mitigate this you go and start buying all of the fancy stuff cups with your name on it pens with your name on it all of this stuff and you haven't even turned to profit. You haven't even you you just doing it now. For some people, they're able to afford that because they got their finances to do it. But if you're limited on your finances, I think starting off with having you know hoodies and shirts and all of this stuff and getting your car engraved, you know, with your business name on it and all of that could be a bit much. And you haven't even gotten the first order yet. You're just like, I'm just pfft, money just everywhere. And you look good. You look fancy. You just are sparkling and glittering and you all dapped up and you don't went out and bought all these suits and bought you some new Stacy Adams. Got you five Godfather hats, all of that. But. You're telling everybody you can only do signings for four hundred dollars. You don't have any experience. You don't have anything that you can tell the employee who you're talking to, the scheduler, that they can go back to the manager and say, yes, this person is reliable <coughs> and it will be worth it. Because if you're saying you're worth that, they got to see that you're worth it. Poor product quality. So in your haste and all of that kind of stuff, impatience. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. Let me go back. My bad. I forgot. I'm sitting up here looking at myself. Poor cost control. Entrepreneur spends too much, especially early in the stages and spends all this startup capital before achieving profitability. OK, my bad. Right here. My bad. Poor um, product control. I mean, yeah, poor product quality. This makes it difficult to sell, sell and difficult to get repeat business. You don't do a good job in notarizations. You can't notarize your way out of a paper bag. You can't notarize yourself out of an open out of an open car, a car that has no doors on it. You can't notarize yourself nowhere i mean you just like you just can't do it 
every time you send documents back they are just completely wrong you've missed five stamps you've missed three signatures that's poor product quality who's the product we are the product we are product and service and the product that you're putting back to them the end result of the notarization is you're not doing a good job y'all hanging there i know this is a long one no said on that y'all get y'all know what i'm talking about y'all see it in facebook people I ain't doing this poor product i ain't shipping back on time i won't scan back the the, the product that you're produce giving them the service and all that is poor <sighs> insufficient working capital an entrepreneur expects and requires immediate cash flow that doesn't occur leading to failure of the business so you start doing signings and they're not paying you until next month <clears throat> you did the signing at the beginning of this month you're not getting paid until the end of the next month so it feels like you've been you've worked for two full months with no pay they're going to pay you but you're not getting it until so now do you have the working capital in order to pay for additional paper, toner, so forth and so on. Your car maintenance, all of that. Vehicle inspections, all of that. You have no capital because you've gone out there and spent money needlessly under your poor cost control. You spent money on stuff and didn't think about having capital available in order to continue to manage the uh hold on capital i there we go um in order to manage the business you have nothing it didn't happen overnight okay Oh man! Oh, there it is. Oops! No, 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 no. There it is. Bad or non-existent budget. Entrepreneur fails to develop written budgets for operating and in, that include all possible expenses. These are areas where you fail. And see, I don't know if people are being taught this. Okay. Um, if you're not being taught this, then here it is these are keys to successful business this is what i'm looking at this is how these are the things that i'm doing and trying to make sure that i'm doing correctly in order to run a successful business if none of this is even has even registered in your mind you haven't even thought of any of this then you need to start thinking of it okay because if all you really been taught is how to go out there and just market yourself and drop off free donuts and free don't 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 give nobody no apple fritters free all right nobody get apple fritters free they they gotta pay money for that okay i ain't giving this no free apple fritters that costs money all right y'all can give me some free apple fritters but you're going out here giving gift cards you're going out here doing signings for free yeah i'm gonna do three or four signings for you for free and not uh, they're telling you to do all of that but you don't know anything about insufficient working capital no no existing budget you got poor quality product poor cost control all of this stuff so my thing is what is your budget have you even figured it out that's why when i first started the only thing i did was bought business cards i bought some business cards and i do have car magnets but i don't use them anymore because <clears throat> of road rage you got crazy people out here they do stuff then i respond because i'm not the type that's gonna let you just almost run me off the road and not honk back or say something maybe i should i don't know and then you looking at me and then you say oh griffin notary services and then go blast me nah i rather just so my magnets is sitting in the garage i ain't worried about using them because <clears throat> i've had too many incidents where people have 
really done some crazy stuff on the road and then they start looking and start trying to write my number down and all of that kind of stuff i like now nah, i ain't got time for you to be stalking me and, and rolling up on me so not nah. so i don't do that um and everything but when i first started i kept my expenses as low as possible as low as possible and i bought the bare minimum of what i needed which was first business cards the stamp the log book some pens clipboards and a bag to stick everything in and then as i continued and as i was doing the business that's when i started adding additional items in but i didn't sit up here and try to just buy the whole world and then think that because i purchased all of this stuff it's going to it means that the the universe or uh, or the spiritual fathers or the guardians and the elders are going to rain down on me success because i went and bought two thousand dollars worth of pens paper t-shirts hats mugs all of that kind of stuff all this branding and i'm supposed to just boom i didn't think that way and most business people will tell you you have to you gotta you gotta be careful about doing that and not all the time you need to do that right off the bat so i didn't do that i didn't do that um trying to make sure i'm okay so bad and non-existent then inadequate financial records an entrepreneur fails to set up bookkeeping or accounting ain't a whole lot to say about that <clears throat> y'all know i talk about that all the time i'm constantly checking doing my thing doing my thing doing my thing i got my slip here from what i just got paid the 10 the 10 um assignments um the 10 orders i'm getting ready to go in there and mark all of those as paid um make sure that all of that is accounted for so i know what i've been paid and what i haven't it's that simple um and i'm getting better at it. i'm not an expert at it i'm not perfect at it i'm probably at about maybe 75 percent where i should be but i'm getting better all right then the next one is loss of momentum um loss of momentum in the sales department this leads to a decline in cash flow and eventually collapse of the enterprise. You're not continuing to market yourself, to sell what you have. You're not looking at opportunities. Somebody might come across you and, you know, that might be a real estate agent and you don't say anything to them. Somebody might be, um, you know, uh, a bank manager and you don't say anything to them. You don't hand them a card or nothing you know that's not good you know you're just like well i'm making money so and you're never looking to promote yourself or to to give an opportunity to someone else to find out about who you are and what you do so i always keep you know you know i got my little tactical pants and everything and i always got my business cards you know i always got my business cards ready to boom 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 not only that, I even have my wife's business cards, okay? Because I'm always ready to promote her, her business and my business. It's that simple. Um, matter of fact, let me put it right back in here so I don't forget. I keep that thing in there. That's I don't lose momentum in promoting who I am. I'm always on the lookout. Always. Always this is the biggest one i sometimes think this needs to be number one but this is a big one failure and hang on in there with me i know this has been a long one y'all failure to anticipate market trends you do not pay attention to what the heck is going on out there so this person here minority mindset on youtube look him up he talks about the real estate market all of this printing of money, everything, and gives good, solid advice on how to pay attention to that, especially the ups and downs of the housing market, so you can be aware of the ebb and flow of it. You need 
Where is do 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 do? I got so much stuff <laughs> up here. Um, there it is. You have to anticipate what's going on in the market. If you start seeing more and more orders coming in for reverse mortgages or purchase and sales, take them. Nah, nah, nah. I'm waiting for the two hundred dollar refi. Get those. Re I'm telling y'all. Pay attention to what's going on. If all of a sudden you start seeing more loan applications for reverse mortgages that means somewhere down the line there's going to be a lot more closings it's that simple it's that simple pay attention to the trends that's going on pay attention to what's going on in your area it's it's, it's really that simple okay if you're not able to anticipate like it says an entrepreneur doesn't recognize changes in demand customer preference or the economic situation you need to you have to you better okay oh man then it goes into this next one lack of manager experience ability and experience you don't have the ability to manage what you're doing you're not good at it you don't have the experience you're all over the place that can destroy your business indecisiveness entrepreneur is unable to make key decisions in the face of difficulties or decisions to delay or improperly make or uh, mm. the entrepreneur is unable to make key decisions in the face of difficulties or decisions are delayed or improperly made because of concern for the opinion or feelings of other people so case in point you're part of a facebook group or the 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 graduate class of a training group and you may see something you see something in the market that's changed for you and you don't want to see and you know it will probably be something that could work out for you but you don't want to do it because you're concerned that the people in your facebook group or your post graduate group from whatever training program you took will have issues about it because it's not something that's popping in their area so you're like well i ain't gonna do it i mean i would do it i mean i see it there but man you know they don't you know that they talk bad about that but you see it's working for you in your area that it can work bump them go on to do what you got to do stop being indecisive you wasn't being indecisive about buying you know 50 you know um coffee cups to give away you wasn't indecisive about giving away them apple fritters without getting no money back i mean you wasn't indecisive about giving away all that free stuff but you're indecisive about making money doesn't make sense to me at all bad human relations personal problems and conflict with staff suppliers creditors and customers can easily lead to business failure it is what it says diffusion of effort an entrepreneur tries to do too many things thus failing to set priorities and focus on high value tasks Whew. That is a lot of people. That has been me. Maybe sometimes it is still me. But these are, are things that can cause businesses to fail. Okay? Now, no, I'm not done. I told you this was going to be a long one. Y'all just going to, I mean, I don't feel like breaking it up. <laughs> All right. So one of the things I want y'all to understand here. And to me, this is very important. And again, you're going to have the links to all of this here. What is business anyway? And this here is the key thing right here. An, or, uh, an organization consisting of one or more people providing goods or services for the benefit of customers and a community. Okay. We interact with businesses. 
on a daily basis. A business can be a small person. A business can be small as one single person or as large as a multinational conglomerate. They are all diverse as well as the people who run them. At the core of business is some goods or services that is offered to customers. All businesses provide some form of product or service to customers. Most of most provide them for a profit. Then it goes on. It talks about here. Business an organization of one or more people providing goods and services for the benefit of customers and the community. Notice that the definition does not talk about profit. Now, it says up here that it most times it does it for profit, but the definition doesn't say anything about profit. This is an important point. Some businesses do generate profit, but there are several others, government educational nonprofits that provide a valuable good and services for no profit. Without these organizations, society would not function, would not function. And the principles in this series will apply to all businesses since fundamentally they all serve a customer. Another aspect of the definitions, and this is the most important part to me or for me, is the inclusion of community. All businesses impact the community. Businesses create jobs, provide essential services, and pay taxes. Without a thriving business base, there is no community. That is why a business also needs to understand its impact on the community. Now that we have defined what business is, we can now figure out how to manage them. First step is to clearly define <coughs> what the objectives are. These objectives are summarized in four statements, mission, vision, values, and mantra. And y'all can read all of that stuff for yourself. Here's my whole point in showing that. Um, when it comes to business, when it comes to business, it talks about serving the community that and to me also, you know, that industry that the business is for. <sighs> what we do is so important. If we don't do it right, it really affects that industry, meaning the mortgage industry, which then affects the community, meaning the homeowners who are trying to buy, sell, and refinance and reverse mortgage their house. So, as an example, oops, wrong one. As an example here, let's just say home for two hundred and fifty thousand. We're just going to use that as a median price, two hundred and fifty thousand. <throat> and there's throughout the country, not don't look, open your mind up, not just your area throughout the country. There's at least one hundred. Closings per week. That don't close like they should <coughs> because the notary made a grave mistake now we're not talking about we know the title company escrow that they can make a mistake but we're going to talk about from what we do because we can't control their stuff you can only control ours so from our standpoint if they've done all of what they're supposed to do still tired from last night yesterday then we need to make sure that we do our part so if they've done theirs we need to do ours because we're the last line of defense it's on us, all right. And it's two hundred and fifty thousand dollar homes, and we're going to just say the average price of these homes are two hundred fifty thousand, and we're going to say that it's four hundred houses a month that do not get closed properly because of the notary. That comes out to a hundred million dollars. That's a hundred million dollars of funds. That is not being more pushed through and circulated in that market, in that banking industry, in that industry, which does, which also affects the community. So if half of those people, which is 500,000, so there's 500,000. So let's just say 
out of the out of the I mean the 200 people they're taking out <clears throat> out of the 200 people they're taking out an average of we'll just you keep number simple <clears throat> fifty thousand dollars cash out refis that's ten million dollars that is missing out of the communities now of course this is across the country but you know that's a lot of money so that fifty thousand dollars that that one person is doing in virginia beach virginia could be fifty thousand dollars that goes into several different businesses to get a new fence to get a new roof maybe even to put down money on a car maybe just flat out money to go to college for a kid maybe to pay a hospital bill who knows but all we know is that 10 million dollars nationwide is is missing right now out of the economy out of the communities because we the notary made a mistake what we do affects people greatly take that off what we do really does affect our community just think for yourself whether you own a home or not okay and i know for those who may not own a home you ain't even thinking about this but if you have a home and you let's just say we're going to take it to this point you have a, a relative that has passed away they passed away and left you a house and that house has two hundred thousand dollars worth of equity in it you have the money that you can go and put a more it's paid let's just pay it all so you can get you can go and refinance the house and pull out money that could pay off all of your debt and get you set up let's just say for life you can start a business all of that you got money in this house that you can go and pull out and then a notary doesn't do your documents correctly and holds up and then the opportunity that you had because you was like okay well i'm you 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 have a chance to buy into a franchise let's just say you have a chance to buy into a franchise and start a business you ain't even talking about doing notary stuff you're just talking about i have a chance to buy this franchise and start a business and the the, the franchise is solid and one of the best places to find out about um franchises let me put this in here um on youtube um this company here um look up franchise city on youtube they have the best information out there about franchises so you go and got all your research everything and they need thirty five thousand dollars that you got to put down and you can get this franchise up and running and you're guaranteed to make the money because the franchise is solid well let's just take us for instance you you was able to get into a chick-fil-a you apply for a chick-fil-a and they're like hey we're going to give you this chick-fil-a we want you and you're like boom i'm about to make me some dollars and the notary messes up the, the documents and you can't get the money for another two weeks and you have a small window of opportunity and if you don't put the money down for this chick-fil-a <laughs> you out and you're never and you're probably never going to get an opportunity with them again because you failed to come through <coughs> it really wasn't your fault it wasn't your fault the notary sat up there and didn't know what the heck he she was doing they didn't understand how to properly notarize the documents and you lost out on a hundred thousand dollars to where you can have 35 of it to go into that business pay off all of your debt boom now yeah when you finally get the money you can pay off all your debt but that opportunity is missed that's how serious i take this that am i causing somebody to miss out on an opportunity because i'm not doing my stuff correctly 
That's how serious I take this. And I want you to take it that serious. Your the lenders want you to take it that serious. And the Tyler and escrow people want you to take it that serious. Everybody wants you, the notary, to take it that serious. If you don't, then that's on you. But you got to have the right mindset to do this. It's talk about the business mindset. And that's the last thing that I want to discuss with y'all. Um Yeah, this is a long one, but we are right, people. Y'all been looking at all those beef videos and everybody fussing and fighting for two, three hours. We ain't going to be up here in no three hours, not like that. Those I said three, I didn't say nothing about no two. All right. So, doo -doo -doo -doo. again, talking about business mindset. Um, Maybe need to zoom in a little bit more. <coughs> Whoa, whoa, that's a little too much. All right. So I said, do you have a business mindset? I'm gonna just hit some highlights on here. Again, y'all go back and read this March of 2014. Um having a business mindset is knowing the purpose of your of, of business is to make money. Sometimes your hobby is just is is just a hobby. Either you are going to have a hobby that makes you a little extra money or you're going to have a business that requires a higher level of development in order to acquire a higher level of income. Having a business mindset means being more strategic about your business activities. Don't just do anything, do any networking event or take any job. Know what the results you want before you invest in the business in business activity. This is very important. Um, this is very, very important, very important. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna cover it, go and read this. Well, let me read this and then we'll discuss it. For example, do you know how much it really costs you to attend a training session or a networking event, money, family, time, babysitter, gas, etc. in order to recoup your investment, your reasons for investing in the training must be things other than meeting people and I just want to learn something. Why? That's a given when you go to networking, meeting people or training, learn something. Your purpose for attending any event must be one aligned with your must be one aligned with your vision and two focus on profitability. So make sure you have some specific outcome in mind before investing in business activities like networking or training. Now, <clears throat> I know people might think I'm all against, you know, the networking events and the conference. And we just had a little networking events with the fellows and all of that. And I, tr and, and I try to make things to where they're going to learn and gain. And I believe everybody learned and gained yesterday. To the point that they can go out there and say, OK, I can apply something into my life from what here that can make, you know, that aligns with my goals or help me to define some goals for some of the fellas. And it's focused on profitability, like what Dr. Tech was talking about, you know, makes, you know, on how to, you know, get, you know, higher fees and things of that nature. Going to a conference, going to like my example my wife she won't go to a hair show because a lot of the hair shows about you going there and spending all this money you don't spent two three four thousand dollars or whatever a hundred dollars or whatever to get there and then you get in there and every vendor is trying to get you to spend at least five hundred dollars with them so you spend all this money and then you come back and then what did you actually learn what did you actually learn and i've been at the, a hair event <coughs> with my photography business um, a guy by the name of Panza, I believe that was his name. And there was this other guy. He was, the, I can't remember his name, but I used to joke about women having zipper weaves, meaning a weave that you zip in. He actually invented one. He actually invented, and I saw him, I was like, wait a minute, that was my idea. I'm sitting there doing a the photography, and this dude created a zipper weave. Okay, and the Panzai guy, I think it was a hair and a fashion show. I think Panzai was a fashion designer out of um, New York, and I was asked to come and do the pictures of it. Great event. Um, I got the negative somewhere in the house. But 
what did the people actually learn? It was a lot of glitz and glam, pop, 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 pop. but what did they actually learn? What I'm talking about, <clears throat> or what they're talking about, not me, what they're talking about is in having a business mindset, you means you be more strategic about your business activities. You have to be strategic, meaning if you're going to be a part of something, it got to produce something for you. That's part of the reason why I'm tired, because I was going around digging this stuff we didn't get to cover yesterday. But I was out there actually trying to get some guest speakers um, and it was sort of last minute. It was a gentleman that I came across and I was trying and I think he had to go out of town. So I was trying to get a few guest speakers um, to talk um, and actually working on that for later. But you got to be strategic about what are you doing and why you're doing it. And is this aligned with your goals and vision? OK. Having a business mindset is knowing <coughs> excuse me, that we need to connect with our business and that that connection is profitable, is profitability. How do you connect with profitability? By knowing your profit margin, cash flow, competitive edge, sales goals, and your key profit indicators. Having a business mindset is being open to multiple streams of income, talking about number six here, and multiple businesses. I met a lady at a conference a while back and I will never forget what she told me. I have one business and my passion. That's my passion. That makes me good income. And I run and I run it. I have another business that generates a substantial profit for me and I have someone else run it. The point, you don't have to put all your eggs in one basket. That's part of having a business mindset. So you can do, develop something that someone else can run that can still bring you money. That's the goal. OK, having a business mindset is understanding your emotional ties to your business. Understanding the emotional ties to your business will allow you to break through your personal barriers and prevent you from doing what you said you was going to do and doing what you want to do. The next time you get an emo get emotional in your business, jot down what you're feel what you're feeling, and what triggered it. This is how you be how you begin to recognize which emotions are keeping you from doing good business. Y'all hear me say this a lot. With the notary business, you got to think of this thing from a logical standpoint. You can't get all caught up in the emotions of. I want to be paid this because it'll make me feel valued. It'll make me feel like I'm worth something. OK, you feel good at making four hundred dollars a signing. But do you have the six thousand dollars at the end of the month that you need? I feel good at having six thousand dollars that I'm bringing in to take care of my family. That makes me feel good. I feel even better when one of those signings or a lot of those signings are 250 300 or 400 but what makes me overall happy is that i was able to accomplish my financial goal yeah i had to work it and i'm not opposed to working it mm, about to come down but that's what it is and you have to pay attention to the triggers you know so it says the main takeaway, every business decision you make today affects your business today, tomorrow and in the future. So become a good strategist. A good strategist looks at all the, the facets of their business today in context of where they are trying to go. A good strategist reacts to problems positively instead of negative instead of negatively. A good strategist also welcomes change. And it turns into an opportunity and turns it into an opportunity. A good strategist can quickly can react quickly with the unexpected. A good strategist has a business mindset. And, and that goes into about the a good strategist can react quickly with the unexpected. I didn't expect them to ask me what I record the D, but when they did, I was like, bam, yes, I can. <clears throat> because I, I, I immediately understood that that was a money-making opportunity. Having a business mindset. See, from a from a W-2 mindset, you'd be like, well, okay, 
man, it might take an hour and, and you know, my time. And, and I was like, give me the opportunity. And I can't even remember how much they paid. It might have been $100 just to go do the deed or whatever. But I did it. And it made them happy. And then they gave me another one. And then the pandemic. <clears throat> you know, so I took advantage of it. I made maybe, what, $150, $200, something like that. That was additional money that I made between two signings. And I'm like, all right, cool. I'll bet. So a good strategist can react quickly when opportunities are there. The last one, the last one. Yes, it's one more. Um, this gentleman, I've seen him around. I, I really don't know a whole lot about him. He talk, he does what is called drop shipping. Um, some of the gentlemen, because a lot of guys get into the drop shipping, and I was looking into it, and I just never really followed up on it, so I never really got into it. Um, he has training and all of that. But he says, how to develop a business mindset in five steps, achieve entrepreneurial success. I'll let y'all read that stuff. I think that's about a background. Here it says, the first step to overhauling your way of thinking. Oh, yeah, that's real small. The first way of to overhaul the way of thinking is to understand the goal. Simply put, a business mindset is a frame of thinking where you view problems where you view problems as opportunities embrace risk and uncertainty and take ownership of your life in other words business owners have an entrepreneurial mindset are optimistic and don't shy away from life's challenges no matter how inconvenient or intimidating they may be of course changing the way you think is easier said than done but it is important to remember that you are completely capable of doing so as you begin to change your mindset, you will undoubtedly encounter some discomfort along the way. But when things get tough, remember you, why you started. Mastering the art of entrepreneurial mindset will open doors you've never thought of before. You just need the courage and commitment to begin. So he talks here, and I'll let y'all read. Um, Oh, well, like Rex said, your brain has been trained to think in certain ways, and now you're attempting to rewire existing habits. And that is the number one thing that I'm seeing because I talk to a lot of people and I can hear in people's voice. And y'all may not realize that I hear this and I don't say it, and I'm going to say it now. Many of you, you're, let me come to me. Many of you are verbally saying entrepreneurial business things but i can hear in your emotions you're stuck on something that is not true you're stuck in something within your feelings you're trying to say the right entrepreneurial thing but there's something that you're really hanging on to from what you might have heard or been trained in the past certain assumptions that are not proven that are not even there's no evidence of it you know people and i'm not even going to make the statements because i don't want people thinking that i'm picking at them even though i'm not saying your name but people have told me various different things that they think is going on in the notary business but yet they can't provide any proof they say these things based off of their personal experience within an industry that they worked in or something that they may have heard somebody else say. Um, but then when I say, where's the proof of that? Well, that's just what I believe. You know, that's what I've been, I, I, you know, I just concluded that, man. And I do make my own conclusions too. And I tell people that, and I'm willing to say, okay, this is my conclusion. But it doesn't stop me from moving forward. A lot of times it really doesn't. I just come, I'm like, okay, I come to the conclusion. This is how things roll. And then I learn to adjust with it and work it to the best of my ability. My question is, you know, I'm like, okay, you're saying that this, you saying what well, this is, what it is. And this is why you won't do these certain things. Cause I make suggestions and people will be like, no, I ain't doing that. Okay. Why? Well, because I believe that this is going to happen. That's going to happen. And, and this is what's going now. Okay. What's, where's the proof of that? Well, I don't have any proof that that's happening. I, that's just what I think is happening. Okay, then 
then if you don't have any proof and you're not willing to get any proof, then why won't you give it a try? Well, because I think it's going to screw me over. I think it's going to mess me up. I think it's going to be bad for me. But is there any proof? And, and where did you hear this from? Some people will say, well, I heard it on Facebook. OK, what proof did they provide? None. Did you ask them to provide proof? No. OK. Or they'll say, well, this is my this is coming strictly from me. What proof do you have? Did you did you ask yourself to provide proof? No, no. So a suggestion is being made and you're saying, no, I'm not going to do it based on something that either somebody else said or that you said to yourself. And there's no proof that either what they said or what you're saying is true. You're just assuming that there's going to be a negative outcome. And it may be. It may be. And when I come across people like that, I'm like, OK, well, then, OK, then you do you. Because you called and asked me and I was like, hey, here's here's an idea. Do this. Try that. No, nah, that ain't going to work. Oh, it's not. Well, I mean, it's working for me, <coughs> which I understand it may not work for you. But then what's your rationale behind it not working? And nobody can really tell me. I'm serious. I mean, and I'm not trying to be funny. <clears throat> so get this done real quick. Like. So break out of your comfort zone is number one. Um, did I? Yep, there you go. To kick off the mindset, start by breaking out of your comfort zone as much as possible. In the business world, you will need to stay agile. The falling victim and falling victim to personal fears will only hinder you, hinder your success. Some face some of your irrational fears head on, no matter how nominal they may be. Change your comfort zone by voluntarily placing yourself and what you consider to be stressful or uncomfortable situations. Example, let's take a look at no accounting experiment, visit the coffee shop of your choosing. I'll let y'all read all of that, okay? Seek out a mentor. Well, let me go back and cover this. Breaking out of your comfort zone. One of the ways that I've suggested to help people break out of their comfort zone when it comes to loan closing is taking loan applications, debt settlements and loan mods. I've suggested that for a reason I've told y'all so that you can get comfortable with the process. Too many people out there, whether you called and talked to me or not, I know a lot of people have crashed and burned and freaked out because you got your first refi of 187 pages and you had no experience of doing this at all. You had no comfort zone at all. <clears throat> you was comfortable in, you know, not doing anything. And now you're being thrown into and you were like, OK, whoa. Just imagine had you because you're uncomfortable doing this signings, you've never done one. But just imagine had you taken a loan application or a debt settlement or or um, a loan mod. Just imagine. And you got comfortable in use. We did an interview with um young lady. God, well, I can't remember her name. Did an interview with a young lady who said that doing those helped her and made her more comfortable. So when she got her first signing, she was able to flow with it. So one of the ways I've suggested that you get you know, break out of your comfort zone of really being a W-2 is taking these orders. You take these orders and that'll help you get into the flow of things. OK. Uh, number two, seek out a mentor whose business mindset you admire. The key point to remembering along your entrepreneurial endeavors is to accept that you are never too good or experienced to learn from your peers or even a mentor. Finding a business mentor is one of the most <coughs> excuse me, effective steps you can take towards building your business mindset. While having a mentor traditionally means securing a relationship with someone you can turn to for questions or career advice, I like to step things up further. Identify someone in your life whose business ideals you admire, then get close to them specifically physically get in the proximity of someone who look who look up to business wise 
I mean, you look up the business wise and do your best to study their actions and entrepreneurial decisions. Learn from their success and failures and add their processes for handling each of your and for handling each to your mental tool belt. Simply put, proximity is power and staying close to a trusted mentor will help you develop your own business mindset. My caveat to this, or really not even caveat, my I like this. Seek out a mentor whose business mindset you admire. In order for you to admire somebody's business mindset, you have to be paying attention to them. You really have to be listening to them. You just can't be excited of the fact that you know of them. But you got to look beyond all of what they say. And I would have to say this. And this is what I personally have learned. The more excitable a person is, the more I really have to pay attention to what's going on because your excitableness doesn't necessarily mean, doesn't always show your true business mindset. Like I love Eric Thomas. He's very excitable, but I sit there and I listen to him intently so when he starts breaking off from the main topic to like some personal things that he's gone through in his life, that's when I started learning his mindset because I started learning what he had to do to adjust the change to ensure that his relationship with his wife stays solid because they went through some things. So, yeah, he's talking about this and he's boom, boom, boom. Ah, I mean, he's doing his thing and it's like, all right, cool. But then I hear him and his wife had this issue. He was trying to work with something with his son or his daughter or something over here with a business partner. And I'm like, okay. And I start putting it together and I'm like, okay. And that tells me more about who he is than anything. Just like he was talking to a story. He was talking about um, his PhD. Somebody made a comment to him about, yeah, my, 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 my wife is going to get her PhD before you. And he had been playing around. And that whole story, I was like, ah, oh, you know, and he had a particular mindset to where he was already behind. He got his PhD on time. He went out and told them, reserve the ring, you do this, that, and the other. My my grandmother's coming to, to the to the um to the event, to my graduation for my doctorate. And the PhD and his professor told him, You ain't gonna graduate on time because you're too far behind. He graduated on time and listening to that story from him helped me understand. See, I like to listen to a person when they're not being so excitable. When they just talk in a regular tone and just tell a story or share something. See, people get all hyped up in the excitableness. Get all of that out of the way. What's going on? And, and then if you're able to be around them personally, that's when you learn even more. But now that with the Internet, you run across all these people, you may never get to actually physically be with somebody. And that's why I tell you all listen to my videos, because you'll learn more about me as you listen to my videos. But you find someone who you admire so that you can learn what their business mindset is, because sometimes people, they may not even really have a good my business mindset. They're just really good at communicating um marketing um selling you know they're real good at that but what is their true business mindset and if you understand what takes needs to take place to have a business mindset then you should be able to recognize it in them the next one reframe failures as learning experiences no one particularly enjoys oops I'm going to do that. Do, 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 do. And then that one. Reframe failures as learning experiences. No one particularly enjoys revisiting past failures, but a successful business professional realizes the value in reflecting on their shortcomings. Begin by analyzing past situations where you feel <clears throat> you failed or could have done better. Okay. Trust your instincts. Do your best to remind yourself of the following throughout your business mindset development. You are smart, 
you are qualified, you are capable. In the business world, you constantly face difficulty, difficult decisions where you feel unsure of what to do. Rather than wallowing in your uncertainty, embrace your gut feeling and trust your instincts. Remember that you have the power to make decisions based on your own intelligence. While data and numbers are certainly your first resource, you don't always need outside approval to make a move. Your capabilities are more are often more than sufficient. That is a huge thing for me. Because people always trying to tell me that my instincts aren't good or that I shouldn't trust my good. You know what? Well, I'm like, OK, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make this move. Even coming into an order. Nah. Even when I was going to do Amazon, nah. Even when I was doing Grubhub and Postmates, nah. <clears throat> then when them folks lost their job, yo, man, you got a connection to get me in the Grubhub? Yo, man, how do I do that Amazon flex? Man, they shut down, dog. What? I can't. Nah, man. They full. Man, I should have got on that when you told me to. I was telling you, man, but you was laughing at me. You thought I was just talking, talking out the side of my neck. Yeah, you right, dog. I was. That's what I tend to go through a lot. Because I tend to look outside of the realm, outside of the box. I think differently. And honestly, I believe we all think differently. Sometimes there are, we don't walk in our, let me come back to y'all. Let me do it this way. We don't always walk in our thinking different, which is trusting your instinct. I've heard many people say that they've done such, you know, they've met this person within the notary world, that person in the notary world, done this training, that training. Hold on. Hold on for a second. I know I ain't so professional with my videos, but yeah, I just thought I said, is my windows up? <laughs> yeah, my windows up. Okay, and both my umbrellas in the car. I hope I think I think I got two more in the in the garage. But um, people have told me they've done things and they've heard certain things being taught in various different training sessions or in Facebook groups or from this so-called quote unquote mentor and Their gut told them that, no, nah, I don't think that's right. But they didn't listen to their gut and then they wound up doing something very, very wrong or getting taken advantage of, losing money, so forth and so on. I was like, hmm, you got to trust your gut. You got to learn to trust that instinct. You have it in you. And that's the, I think, different part that all of us has. Whether or not you allow yourself to think different. Is a different thing so think different allow yourself to think different don't be afraid to think different in the beginning of my life yes I was in my adulthood life I was afraid to think different um and I'm glad that I did because it has proven to be very very profitable for me and my family um, for me as just an individual and I don't regret my thinking differently it has not always worked out but it is but i will say it has worked out more so than i've had more success with me going with my different thought process than failure when i tried to go along with what other people say because they claim to know better than me or whatever the case may be it really it never worked out and it hasn't been a whole lot of success with it and when it doesn't work, all they say is, oh, man, my bad. I, I'm i just that's what I, I mean, you know, that hey, I'm like, OK, why are you choking on all on all this fake words you're saying? Last one. Become a producer instead of a consumer. As you should never stop learning and consuming. Make sure you're still producing and contributing to <clears throat> your own two cents as well. It's easy to fall into the routine of consuming, but do not let other success stifle your potential. 
exercise your business mindset effectively means that the majority of your time should be spent producing and forwarding your success rather than consuming what's already available keep the conversation moving with your own thoughts as well as as well to stay sharp and then it has a diagram down here on the roadmap of developing the business mindset um thank y'all for your time didn't expect it to last this long honestly i was thinking maybe 45 minutes but y'all know how i do the last one here being a producer it's nothing wrong with starting out with a person learning from them but i think and as i've been looking at this business there are some of you that can come that can branch out and do your own training programs way more effectively than some of the programs that are out there and i know people talk about me doing it and all of that and i could i just don't really have the time to and i'll be straight with you overall i don't think i would have the support and y'all know what i'm talking about because when you look at the landscape of the people who are actually out there as notary trainers you don't see too many black men doing it i'm cool with i mean people cool with me on youtube but would you really be cool with me really doing it doing it and i'm not trying to i'm just saying i'm just being honest with you when you really look at the landscape of notary trainers so i'm not saying that i couldn't do it I'm pretty sure i could but we know the, i know the road that i would the, the uphill that i would have to go and i know that i would really have to come with something special special but i'm not into gimmicks as you can see so i'm never going to do anything from a gimmicky standpoint just to attract people and bring people in i'm just going to be solid hey this is what you need just boom 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 and people don't want that people want to be entertained like in gladiator are you not entertained that's what people want male female young old they want entertainment and with this business it in my opinion it's not about being entertained it's not being about hyped up but there are some of you out there that i know could probably branch off instead of you constantly being under somebody else pushing their product pushing their stuff you can develop your own there are some things that i'm working on but i believe there's a couple of y'all out there that you're, you're 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 sitting in the wheelchair of other people's success and it's crippling you and you're not out there doing what you need to do so i'm encouraging you to get out there and do your own thing and don't limit yourself because you see the fallacies and the deficiencies in what they're doing yeah it might be popular it might be making a lot of money but there's some areas of deficiency that really can change the notary game and make things better and i believe you have the ability to do it you have the cachet you even have the following but you're stuck underneath the wrong person you need to come out and be your own man your own woman there's a group of y'all that i believe that can come together and go out there and do this thing but sometimes you got to pull away from mommy and daddy and go out there and do your own thing and do it correctly and not be a scammer out there i'm just being real with you because there's too many people who have pulled away but they not all they're doing is scamming and their stuff is, is just as bad as who they came from but i think your stuff can be better i believe it can be better i know it can be better and i'm waiting to see it but i do have my own things that i'm working on so don't think that Griffith just sitting back just trying to be a youtube guy no there's other things i'm working on thank y'all for your time i really appreciate all of y'all i'm sure you learned something great here today that can help you in your business mindset and having an understanding the basics of business to grow this business this notary business and anything else you do 
Y'all have a great one. I appreciate y'all. Um, peace.